Today, I want to talk about how we can help our children to be authentic. And this is a part two. And today, we're going to talk about saying I'm sorry. Raising great kids is a privilege and a responsibility. Sometimes our children can't see their own greatness. Sometimes we can't. Other times we can see their greatness but struggle to step up because of our own challenges. We will be discussing the brain science, tools and techniques that help us raise great kids. Hi, I'm Cynthia Armstrong with Raising Great Kids and I have been a teacher in the general education and the special education field, and I homeschooled my children for five years. This is kind of the things I've learned along my journey that I want to share with you and uh, continue to learn as we go on this journey together. So one of the things that I noticed a lot um, when I was teaching was um, saying I'm sorry. And as a parent, um, I waffled back and forth. Do I make my child say I'm sorry? Do I not? What do I do? Uh, but then as a teacher, I noticed that there were some kids that would go up um, and hit another student and walk Some kids, okay, now you've got to tell them I'm sorry. Now you've got to tell them I'm sorry. But the problem with that, again, is that we're teaching them to lie. And is that being our authentic self when we teach them to lie um, for our children? It's not. Because we're saying, um, again, that there's something wrong with their emotions, that they're not allowed to have emotions uh, that we consider negative. But really, um, what we want to boil down to is that it's not the emotion itself. Uh, it is um, their response to the emotions they're having. And so instead of feeling angry or offended for the other child or embarrassed, like, oh, I can't believe my child did that. What are all the other parents going to think? Right? <laughs> we, we have some of these negative emotions ourselves that we respond to, but often we're, we are very, um, not self-aware of our own negative emotions and responses because we've been taught that they're not okay. So we don't look at them too closely and we lose our authentic self and we lose um, our ability to help our child. So even when it's difficult, take a look at those um, uh, and again, I'm putting them in quotes, negative emotions, the ones that we've been taught are negative. Because guess what? They're not negative. They are there. They have a purpose. And that purpose is to give us information. Uh, and um, that information is vital for us understanding our authentic self and um, understanding um, what it is that that we want to change to be more in line with our authentic self. And the same goes for our children. So 
um, if we want our children to be loving and to be kind and to have empathy, then um, how we teach that is by understanding all of our emotions, even the ones that we don't uh, necessarily want to hang on for very long. Uh, and so we look at that. So if our child um, did something aggressive, right, and we want them to say, I'm sorry, what we really want isn't for them to say, I'm sorry, but to to feel that, oh, there's a better way to do that. And so um, my take is please don't tell our children that they need to say I'm sorry or that I'm sorry is what they do to fix it. So some of the things are, uh, again, addressing the emotion behind um, what caused that response in them. Uh, uh, ones we talked about before are, you know, um, they're feeling um, like they don't have control and they might interpret that as feeling weak and they feel in control or stronger when they take something, when they hit somebody or things like that. Uh, it could also be um, that they need um, that they might be feeling a deficit in that love uh, and connection. And uh, yes, if they don't have the, that love, again, we settle for connection. So they might be going over there and, um, uh, and you know, sh getting that connection because uh, uh, that feeling of connection doesn't have to come from a positive experience or a growth experience. It can come from uh, a negative or a put down. We can still feel that connection uh, and things like that. And so uh, it's really uh, important to look into ourselves. Are we allowing the negative emotions in ourselves? And experiencing a negative emotion isn't um, require a specific response, like being angry. Um, and and anger we do label as a feeling or emotion, but often it comes after. Uh, one that came before, that fear, that deficit in one of those needs. And so as you look into those, really look at yourself. Um, what is it that I want? Uh, and it seems um, contradictory sometimes to say, wait, if I want my child to be kind, to be loving, to be those things, they really need to understand the negative emotions. And so, yes, <laughs> because understanding those opposites helps us decide which one that we want for ourselves. Where if we just kind of like, oh, hush, I can't feel that, I can't, whatever, it actually often has the opposite effect and we get those more and we get those more because we haven't learned we haven't gotten the message of the of those um again in quotes negative emotions those emotions we don't want and even though it's okay to have all of these emotions that doesn't mean again that we hang out and see oh where am where am I experiencing a deficit um, because unless we're experiencing a deficit we don't um, have that those emotions but being here in this mortal world we feel a lot of deficits we feel um, 
that fear of missing out on some of those psychological needs we have. And again, if you need a review of the psychological needs, I will put that link um, in the description um, below. Uh, so please uh, look at why do we want to have our child say, I'm sorry. Uh, is that really teaching them what we want to teach them? Um, to lie, to not be their authentic self, or to be truthful. opportunity for a deficit I caused in the other person. And that's where we want to say, oh, well, what is